Hello, my name is Lorene Harris and I'm going to introduce you to multiple resource theory. Multiple resource theory is a way to analyze human performance in what Christopher Wickens calls high workload multitask environments. He uses the example of a driver on an unfamiliar road. This driver is engaged in a complex combination of cognitive, sensory, and physical functions in a high-stakes, high-workload situation, operating 3 to 5 tons of vehicle at 30 to 60 miles an hour. That's something most of us do every day. An analysis based on multiple resource theory describes the cognitive, sensory, and manual processes a human must perform while engaging in an activity, and shows where simultaneous processes are using the same resources. Some simultaneous processes complement each other, while others interfere with performance and cause breakdowns. Here's a great example of multiple resource theory in action, Chef Gordon Ramsay. He's a TV chef who owns a three-star restaurant in London and highly acclaimed restaurants all over the world. He's a master at coordinating simultaneous demands. Working in the kitchen of a busy restaurant require, requires working memory to, to remember what order tickets came in, how long a steak has been on the grill, and how many specials are left, for example. It requires physical and spatial ability to move around a small crowded space with hot pans and uh, breakable dishes. It requires attention to sensory processes, the smell and sound of cooking food, how it looks and tastes, how the ingredients feel when you cut them, and verbal ability responding to questions, directing kitchen staff, reading tickets, engaging in banter. His secret? He uses multiple resource theory. Of course, he isn't using it deliberately. Instead, he calls it instinct, common sense, and competence. But he uses these qualities just as multiple resource theory recommends. To balance multiple demands on working memory, Ramsey trains his chefs to constantly vocalize. This, he doesn't, he may not know it, but this is because response tasks can be performed without interfering with working memory. So the kitchen staff essentially is externalizing some of these demands by using one another as temporary memory storage. Vocalizing also allows Ramsey to offload some of the many visual tasks to the auditory system. If he needs to know that the dessert for table 36 is ready, he hears, yes, chef, and it confirms it without the need to take his eyes off the main course. He also complements visual processing with other sensory information like smell and sound. A saute pan that stops hissing could mean that what's in it has started to boil and overcook. But multiple resource theory isn't just for celebrity chefs and human computer interaction research researchers. We can use it to understand things we encounter in our own environment every day. Here are two examples. An overheard cell phone call. This is annoying because we can't predict what's being said by the other person. So we have to process that information cognitively. When we hear the other side of the conversation, our brains can anticipate what comes next, and we move from cognition, the cognition stage to response mode stage. In this stage, sounds become ambient and pre-attentive, so the language center is available for other tasks. Texting and driving. Texting requires additional manual tasks, pressing the keyboard and verbal processing, composing the content to an already demanding activity. The additional manual and verbal tasks of te texting interfere with those simultaneously required by driving, which causes performance to break down and your car to crash. So just don't do it, okay? 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to multiple resource theory, and I hope you'll listen to Gordon Ramsay and use it to make changes that enhance performance, whether you're designing software, running a restaurant, or just driving your car.